Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel in another video. Uh, I did a poll on my community tab asking what you guys would want to see and then an instructional video kind of on different pouring techniques was the top. So today we're going to be going over ring pour. So this is going to be the first video in a series. I'm going to be doing a ring pour in the, three different ring pours in this video and we're going to be using different mediums. So this medium is going to be 70% glue, 70% water mixed at a two to one uh, medium to paint ratio. This one is just going to be Floetrol mixed again at 2 to 1. And this one's going to be Floetrol with silicone at 2 to 1. I do understand that with ring pours, typically you don't want to use silicone because it's going to create a lot of cells. And the idea of a ring pour is having those nice crisp lines. But it is also a look that some people do enjoy. So I was going to go through all three and we're going to see what we get. And that way you'll know what you can use to achieve whatever desired effect you're looking for. And let's get right into it. So we're gonna start with this one first with the flow trawl and the silicone. That way by the end of this video, you'll be able to see the effect of the silicone and the flow trawl in the paint because it's gonna to continue to move and shift and do what it does while we progress through the other pores. So I'm just gonna layer my colors in the cup. What I'm using color-wise is uh, Liquitex Basics Dioxazine Purple. I have Liquitex Basics Brilliant Purple. And then Artist Loft Cerulean Blue. So we have a nice little color palette here. Uh, all three are going to have the exact same color palette, the, ex the exact same uh, amount of paint. The only difference is the mediums. And I'll make sure that I layer them all in the cups the same way too. That way hopefully we get a very similar look, but the only difference is the mediums that we used. So. How are things going in the parts of the world where you guys are all watching from? I know over here in North Carolina, today is the last day before lockdown, so at 5 p.m. tonight, everything that is not considered essential is completely locked down. So all I have right now is ample amount of time and paint. So I'm just gonna be banging out some videos, trying to interact with you guys I owe Doris a live stream and I know that and that is definitely going to happen. I'm just sorting out some stuff going on right now. But I'm curious, what are you guys what what is the situation for you guys where you're where you live right now as far as the lockdown of coronavirus stuff's going on? Um, cuz this this illness is kind of catching on and taking everything by storm, so I'm kind of curious as to you know, what's going on in your neck of the woods? Even better than that, what are you doing to keep busy? Because <laughs> I've been running out of things to do. I can only clean my studio so much, I can only ride my bike so much, run so much, I can only exercise so much. I'm just running out of things to actually do. I wish I had my kiddos here. At least I'd have that kind of interaction, but I don't have them here, so. What are you guys doing to keep busy? Just let me know in the comments section below. Very interested in that. Maybe you'll give me some ideas to kind of help me remain sane myself. So the consistency of this paint with the Floetrol and the little two parts Floetrol, one part paint, it's kind of uh, a little slight bit thinner than Warm Honey. It'll flow off the stick, but it it doesn't sink straight down into the paint. It's It leaves a little mound for a, a short period of time. But when you're doing a ring pour, you do kind of want your paints to be a little bit thicker. Because if they are too thin, then they tend to mix when you're pouring, depending on the technique of ring pour you use. They can mix in the cup while you're just pouring your rings, and that's not the that's not the effect I'm going for. Some people like that effect and that's fine, but that's not the effect I'm going for with these. I want to try to create as crisp of lines as I can using these three different pouring mediums. So that way, let's say maybe you don't have uh, school glue at, at your house and all you have is flow draw. Well, if you're planning on doing a ring pour, this is pretty much what you're gonna get. All right, so this one has the silicone in it, one to two drops per color. It also has flow draw at a two to one medium to paint ratio. So we're gonna just do a ring pour on this, right? And hopefully it'll be 
pretty awesome, but it will definitely have cells in it. Kind of grateful for all this time that I get to spend, you know, taking care of me. Don't know if that makes sense, but I am grateful that, you know, we have this time right now. You know, spend time with your families, build, you know, those really strong, long lasting relationships with your children, and, you know, teach them about the world. Chances like this don't really come around too, too often. So I, I just want to try to make the best of this time that I have. As you can see how it's coming out, you, you may or may, no, you can't see the mound from where you're at, but there's a small mound. And then it slowly settles down into the paint. Now I'm just gonna try to get it back to the middle. I don't have a base coat on this just cause it's, this is for instructional purposes, but typically, yes, you do wanna have a base coat down to allow the paint to slide better. So whatever uh, base coat you would use, you would mix that paint to the same ratio with the same mediums to try to keep it the same consistency to avoid uh, cracking or crazing. I'm gonna use the heat gun because there are bubbles in this paint. It is a little bit thicker, so it takes a little longer for the bubbles to completely settle out. I already know there's silicone in this anyway, so it's gonna generate cells. So we're just gonna pop whatever surface bubbles are there. And then after that, we're gonna stretch it. Get my gloves on. worried I wasn't going to be able to have gloves. I'd have just messy hands while I'm doing all my painting and stuff because of the way things are going. As you can see, you're starting to see a little bit of the flow troll and the cell structure coming up between. And when you stretch it, you're going to see it a lot, a lot more. It's going to definitely be a lot more pronounced. Just gonna stretch it a little bit. And it's a little bit more difficult to get it to flow just because of the lack of a base coat. And that's that's okay. And I don't think I'm going to take it all the way off the edges because this is just to show you what these uh, compounds do together. I'll probably end up painting over this more than likely, but typically I would definitely take it off the edges and um, work on the composition a little bit more than I probably will do for this for this ring bore. I do want to stretch it so you guys can see it. So I might end up taking it over the edges anyway, because I, I want you guys to be able to actually see what's going on in this this pour with the flow troll and the silicone in it. Because it is a ring pour. It's just not your traditional ring pour. I love the way these purples and the cerulean blue come to kind of play off each other. All right, so we're gonna stretch it back towards the center. It's not wanting to move because the paint is so thick. But thickness is what you want if you wanna to try to maintain those lines, those crisp colors together. The thicker, the thicker the better, as long as you can still 
uh, manip manipulate the paint on the substrate you're using. I'm trying to keep my big nugget out of the frame. that. That's as far to that corner as I'm going to take this one. It's actually really pretty. I like this effect. Because it is a ring pour, but it's almost like almost a galaxy pour at the same time. Just because of the the concentric lines are kind of disrupted by the Floetrol and the silicone together. And I still have to torch it anyway because there's still a few tiny little bubbles. So this is going to be pretty nice. So that's that one. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna set this one off to the side after I torch it. And at the end, when we bring them all back together, you'll be able to see the differences in each one. Super excited about that. So just popping all those bubbles on the inside, right? And I know there's silicone in it, so I'm giving it a little bit of heat so that silicone can actually react. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set this off to the side and bring our next one over. So we're gonna layer them the same way we did. The consistency of this one is about the same as the last, just because it's the same, same thing. There's just no silicone in it. So we should get around the same kind of results. Same colors, same layering. So I'm gonna be doing this as a series, like I was saying. Um, what is the next video you guys wanna see as far as an instructional kind of video on what what technique flip cups galaxy pours open cup pours swipes because there's several of of each kind that i can show you just curious as to what is it that you would rather see next so in the comments below just tell me what you'd rather see next galaxy pour do you want to see an open cup a flip cup do you want to see a swipe no. what do you want to see guys I'm curious Kind of bummed out too because the show I was supposed to be going to is now canceled. It was supposed to be the first Sunday of every month, but now the first showing is not for a month and a half away. So it's like I lost two months of being able to be out there and, you know, just get a feel for it, see what it's like, interact with people. But, you know, safety is paramount and. I do know that during this time it is a serious thing. It's not it's not anything to laugh about. So I hope you guys are all taking whatever precautions you need to to maintain safety and try to be healthy and happy. Because being healthy and happy is really all you need in life. You can find happiness everywhere. You just have to be willing to look for it, you know? So we layered our cups, and we're going to do the same type of a pour, but this one is just Floetrol and paint, no water, and we're going to do the same technique we just did. And when I poured it last time, I poured with those lines, so I'm going to do the same thing, because I do want to achieve something similar. I'm always holding my breath. Some of y'all are like, you have so much patience. It's like, yeah, but I'm suffocating over here, guys. Just trying not to 
jack it up, you know? So again, yeah, it's got some thickness to it because it has to, to maintain those lines. So there are bubbles in the paint, unfortunately, that I couldn't completely get rid of. But that is okay, because the Floetrol is gonna still uh, disrupt these lines with some cell structure. Oops. Let me just start taking it a little slower. Same deal, we're gonna center it. And then I'm gonna pop these bubbles real quick and then we'll get to stretching it. There's a lot more bubbles in this one for some reason. One way I've noticed to avoid the bubbles too is if it's not a spur of the moment type pour and you know you're going to be doing it with certain colors, you can try to mix those colors the day prior. And you know, if you have a little plastic cup or something, you can put them in the cup and put some tape over the top of it to protect it so it doesn't get any uh, dust or debris in it. And that'll protect the paint for the most part. The only thing you'll have to do the next day is give it a, just a very, very light stir, just in case the colors have started to thicken up depending on the temperature that you're storing those paints at. And that's really all you would have to do. I normally don't have the forest thought to do that. I tend to mix my paints and stuff. I'm not even sure the colors I'm going to use until I actually just take them out and look at them together. But I've always liked this color combination here. The brilliant purple, dioxazine purple, and cerulean blue together. The only color I might have added to it was like the Mars black or something like that. A darker color to give more of a contrast to those lines or a white. Black or a white would have worked just fine. And I really like playing with these colors. They, they just, they're so nice together. All right, so now we brought it there. So now we'll bring it back. I really appreciate you guys. I always get so much support and so much interaction and engagement on all these videos. It, just, it blows me away, guys. I can't tell you how much I really do appreciate it. Really can't. So right now I'm just stretching it down to that corner so that I can play with it a little bit. You can see even with just Floetrol, it's still generating some cells. Those lines are not staying right next to each other. But it actually looks good, I like it. I like the one with silicone too. So we'll bring that center portion back towards the middle just a little bit. start on the the one that should generate no cells at all because it is just glue and just water and paint so there's no additional chemicals mixed in so it should be just a very straight easy pour all right so last one but not least right i think this is the one i'm going to probably like the most is just glue and water, 70% glue to 30% water. I have it all mixed in a little bottle over here. So that way it's already pre-mixed and I could just add a two to one ratio medium to paint. I have the same colors. Now these colors, they are a little bit thicker just because it's not, um, it's not just Floetrol, it's glue also. So, with the glue, it does make the colors a little bit more dense and thick. 
than the others. So just to be aware of that. It may take a little bit longer to stretch these colors, but you also shouldn't generate any cells. Now, if I do have anything in here that ends up looking like cells at the end, that's gonna be just because I, I mixed my paints right before the video and there was some little bubbles and stuff in them. So you gotta be very careful with the bubbles. Try to get them out. Uh, or mix them in advance so that you don't have to worry about that. Now the consistency of this paint, it's more like a warm honey or like a, uh, what is it? Pancake syrup, like some kind of uh, the syrup you put on your waffles and stuff like that. That's kind of the consistency of this stuff. But it should make for very, very nice lines. And the lines should stay exactly where you stretch them to, instead of like the other ones. When we get to the end of the video, you're going to see the difference between all three and then you'll, you'll definitely see the difference for sure. So the last couple days here in North Carolina have been gorgeous. Just gorgeous. 85 degrees, sun's out, shining, the birds are out. Actually had a little cookout yesterday. You know, didn't have anybody over, but it was a nice little barbecue. And some burgers and brats, whatever. But you do what you need to do to keep busy. And you know, there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of barbecue every once in a while. I enjoy it. I get all the paints out because this one's going to be much harder to stretch just because of the thickness and the consistency of these paints so I'm trying to make sure I get it all out. I'm starting to see some weirdness in the cup right there too. I don't know if you can see it but it almost looks like there's Floetrol in these cups and I absolutely know there's not so very strange. You know what I mean? It's like when the colors are interacting with each other, they're touching each other, they start to bleed into each other a little bit or kind of blend. And I'm starting to see a little bit of that with my glue and water mix, which is strange. I've never seen that before. But again, here we go. I gotta hold my breath and we will start. find one thing I should have done was mix these colors in advance. I'm pretty spontaneous. Hold on a second. Sorry about that guys. I know that was a cardinal sin of me to interrupt but that was uh, my customs job calling and I had to answer it. I'm going to try to maintain the stream as best as possible. The lines are still going to be the same regardless. Um, but you're typically not supposed to cut it off midstream like that. So I do apologize for that, but the effect is still going to be the same. So you just want to make small concentric rings. Now if you're using a much bigger cup, Um, just the action of that you're jostling the paint side to side will start to blend the paints if they're thin. If some of you have done ring pours before, then you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, just the action of 
pushing the cup side to side, making these rings that I'm making, will actually start to muddy the colors together. Because they're already getting slightly mixed just by pouring them out of the cup together. But this action of, turn, of moving it side to side also will start to combine colors. And if that's something you don't want, if you have a color combination like yellow and, and uh, blue and you don't want a green, you can take a white, hold on, I'm sorry. Okay, you can take a white and layer it in between those colors so that way they can't mix, if that makes sense. All right, so we'll, we got plenty of paint on here. I think that one, I, I had a little bit more than I needed, so. But, yeah, so we're just gonna stretch this one out. Getting some really nice lines. I like this. It's looking really good. Turn it so you guys can see what's going on better. Another thing that you'd kind of want to do, if you want it to be perfectly semicircle, don't do what I did and start pouring it off the side. I was just trying to keep it like the center because the center was moving. My table's not level. I need to fix that. But when you're tilting it, start tilting it in semicircles like this. Or not semicircles, but full circles like this. So it's slowly opening up while it's coating whatever surface you're working with. Because if you don't and you do what I'm doing, and this is what happens, so you can see how it's not really a perfect circle anymore. There are things you can do to fix that, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do them as best as I can to try to get it back to a round shape just for this video. So that's gonna require me taking certain parts of that ring to the edges, letting it pour off, and then manipulating it after the fact. So, as you can see, I let this side kind of pour off so that I can keep this round shape here when I pour it back down the side. And I think I'm gonna let this side come off. And once this side starts coming off, I'm gonna pour it that way and try to get this to kind of flow and maybe round out a little bit. I'm trying to get that, uh, you know, the ring shape back because I wasn't paying too much attention and I should have been. We are seeming to get cells and that is odd to me. I think a lot of that is just bubbles. But either way, it's gorgeous. I'm loving it. I have noticed with the glue too, the, the colors are much more pronounced. They, they stand off the, the tile a lot better. So with the flow troll, it's I think it's adding a slight white tinge to all the colors, making them slightly more pastel than they really are. So. So we're almost where we need. And then I'll be able to bring it back. Just about there. Alright, so now we're going to take this and bring it back to the middle. But if you want to find your own style, whichever kind of uh, techniques you like as far as mixtures of the paints and the ratios, the best thing to do, guys, is just to experiment with it, play with it. You're eventually going to find what you enjoy. And once you find what you enjoy, this art form kind of takes over, kind of takes on a life of its own. It's really interesting. All right, so... I'm gonna bring the tiles back out here. I'm gonna lay them out and then I'll do a close up on each one telling you which ones that one was. So let me take these, these gloves off and get things set up and I'll be right back for the reveal. 
All right, you guys, this is the one that was just glue, water, with no silicone, no Floetrol. As you can see, like some of the lines are super defined in there. There is some cells that came up and I'm not entirely sure how that happened, but I'm gonna have to figure that out. And moving on to the next one. This one was the Floetrol and um, paint together. So this one you can see some of the lines did get stretched out. There is cells that were generated on this pour. But the lines are also pretty crisp. Very minimal blending on the lines. And then this last one was the Botrol with silicone in it. And as you can see, there's quite a lot more cells that popped up in between each layer of the paint. But it, all three of them came out gorgeous. I kind of love them all.